Welcome to today's Christ Central Kids Family Worship. My name is Eric Cho, and I am the Children's Director at Christ Central, and I am here with my friends today. Hi! Hi! Hi. Hello! My name is Priscilla Kwok, and I'm the Preschool Coordinator at Christ Central. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm the Nursery Coordinator here at Christ Central. Hi, I'm Pastor Jimmy. I'm the pastor of families and small groups here at Christ Central. I'm glad that my friends were able to join us for today's worship, and I'm glad that you guys are here today to join us. For today's introduction question, please share with your family why did God create us differently. And before we share our answers, I want you guys to take some time to really think about this question and to the best of your ability to share and talk with one another. Now pause this video so that you guys could have this time to discuss. I hope you guys had a great time of discussion. So the question was, why did God create us differently? You know, if we were all the same, don't you think that it would be kind of boring or even weird? If we all look the same, smell the same, talk the same, that means we would almost be like clones or robots. There would be no diversity. God created us to worship him, to love him, to enjoy him, to bring him glory. And he made us differently so that he can enjoy all different types of worship to him. And that we can show different ways to love him. And we can bring him glory in our own unique ways. Priscilla, how about you? What do you think? Well, well. God made us in his own image. In Psalm 139, verse 14, it says that we were wonderfully and fearfully made. God took time to make each and every one of us unique, from our heads to our toes and from our personalities to our appearance. There is no one like you. He specifically made each of us for a reason for a special purpose. This is all part of God's plan for us in this world. What about you, Michelle? You are so right, Priscilla. I was gonna say the same exact thing. No matter what we think and no matter what we see in ourselves or others, we are unconditionally and eternally loved by God. God sees us as worthy, God sees us as loved and as his own masterpiece because of Jesus Christ. And through the word, prayer, ourselves, and community, God constantly reminds us that we're created in his beautiful image. Even though we're all different and God created us differently, we still get to worship the same God. Yeah, what about you, Pastor Jimmy? Wow, that's a very great answer, everyone. Well, I think God created us all so differently because God himself is so creative. You know, it's kind of like one of my favorite candies, like Skittles. If you've ever mm. eaten some Skittles, mm. all the different colors and all the different flavors. Or if you've ever gone to an ice cream shop and you saw all the different flavors and you're trying to figure out which one you want to try. Well, God created us so differently because God also wanted us to express our love and our praise and our, and our worship of him in such unique ways, just the different ways that he created all of us. So I think God did that just simply because God is beautiful and he's so creative. Mm, thank you so much for sharing, my friends. Thank you so much. You know, in today's Bible story, we're going to learn about how Jesus healed 10 lepers. But one of them was saved because of his faith. We see Jesus is our healer and our savior, and he died on the cross and rose back from the dead for all people, no matter how different you are, as long as you have faith in him. You know, Pastor Jimmy, I was wondering if you could um, open, us our, open our worship time with prayer. Sure, let's all pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you for the wonderful privilege of worship. We also thank you that this time we get a chance to think and hear and grow in our understanding about why you made us all so differently and how you loved us all in the same way. 
We thank you for Jesus, our Lord, and may our worship time be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 High five. High five. Ah. <laughs>
When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to them, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Thank you, and you guys have a great Sunday, and be safe. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem when he entered a village. Ten men cried out to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. The men did not come close to Jesus because they had a skin disease called leprosy. Jesus saw them and said, Go and show yourselves to the priest. Jesus wanted the men to follow the law God had given to Moses. The law said, a person who had a skin disease had to go to a priest to be examined when the disease was gone. The priest and the person had to follow certain rules so the person could live a normal life among people again. As they went, the ten men were miraculously healed. One of the men, seeing that he was healed, went back to Jesus. He praised God and fell face down at Jesus' feet, thanking him over and over. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked the man, Weren't ten men cleansed? Where are the others? Only this man, a foreigner, had returned to give thanks and praise to God. Jesus told him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. Jesus healed the ten men who cried out to him. The one who had faith was saved. When we trust in Jesus by faith, he heals us from something greater than a disease. He saves us from our sins. We can give him thanks and worship him for making us new. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hi, boys and girls. Hi, families. Hi, hi, hi. hi. So for today's Bible lesson, I asked Michelle and Priscilla to join us in um, teaching today's Bible lesson. And today we're going to learn about how Jesus is the healer and how Jesus healed 10 men. So I hope and pray that everyone can give their full attention to God this morning. All right, Priscilla, take it away. Thank you, Pastor Eric. So last week we learned that Jesus loves everyone. We saw how Jesus went to find a Samaritan woman and offered her eternal life through the living water. And we saw how Jesus revealed to this woman that he was the Messiah. Today, we're going to see how another Samaritan learned that Jesus was the Messiah and how he responded. Mm. Jesus was traveling between Galilee and Samaria, and then 10 men approached him. The Bible says that these 10 men suffered from a disease called leprosy. And if you remember, leprosy was a skin disease. And those who suffer from leprosy were considered outcasts. And it was very sad. You see, they were contagious. Nobody wanted to be around these lepers. And the Jewish law even said that their skin disease made them unclean. Imagine being labeled unclean or dirty just because you had a sickness. See, they had to go live by themselves. They had to self-isolate. They had to physically distance themselves from everybody and probably had to stay six feet apart from everybody. And I bet you they even had to wear masks like this. So when the 10 lepers heard about Jesus and that Jesus was going to stop by their city, they had to meet him. They stood at a distance and called out to him. What did the men say to Jesus? Find and read Luke chapter 17, verse 13. Priscilla, I can read it. And lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. 
The men cried out for mercy. They didn't ask him for money or for food. They wanted Jesus to have compassion on them and to heal them. Okay, <laughs> much better. All right. So when we ask for mercy, we're asking for something that we do not deserve. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. What we deserve when we sin is death. But when God allows us to live even after we sin, that is an act of mercy. Because he is giving us something that we don't deserve. Jesus told them to go to the priest. That was unusual because that's what they were supposed to do after they had been healed. Priests are the only ones who can declare that these men could be healed. The Bible says that while they were going to the priests, they were miraculously healed. Jesus showed that he had powers that an ordinary man does not have. He shows us that he is the Son of God. When one of the men realized he was healed, what did he do? Let's look at Luke 17, 15 to 16. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. One of the men, a Samaritan man, returned to Jesus. He understood that the healing had come from him. He knew that Jesus was the Son of God, the Messiah. Crazy. So he turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and fell on his face and, and at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. He praised God and honored God. That one man out of the ten understood who Jesus was. That one leper recognizes the healing that he received from God. He recognized that God deserved praise for his healing. Man, he must have been so happy. And I can only imagine how happy he must have been. Jumping and shouting and probably dancing. Now, this makes me so happy. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? No. I think so. Uh -huh. This makes me so happy that this makes me want to dance. Dance party! All right, hit it! Let's dance. got what they wanted from Jesus. They were healed, but only one recognized that it was Jesus and worshiped him. And the other nine just went on their ways. Jesus said to the one leper who worshiped him in verse 19, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Jesus healed the 10 men who cried out to him, the one who had faith was saved. When we trust in Jesus by faith, he heals us from something greater than a disease. He heals us from our sins. When Jesus was on earth, he not only healed the sick or raised the dead or performed miracles, he also defeated sin and death once and for all. When he died on the cross and when he rose again, Jesus did this for all people. Jesus died on the cross and rose again for everyone, no matter who you are, no matter how you look, as long as you have faith in Jesus and recognize that Jesus is our Messiah. When we say all people, we are talking about all the different types of people God has created. Whether you're a kid or an adult, a girl or a boy, 
you're Korean, Mexican, African, or American, you're light skinned, dark skinned, peach skinned, or yellow skinned, Jesus died for all types of people. Mm. Jesus offers eternal life to those who believe in him. Whether you have leprosy or other types of sicknesses, whether you have special needs and or superpowers, whether you have long hair or short hair or no hair at all, whether you're tall or short, an old grandpa or a newborn baby, Jesus still died for them because God loves his creation. So let's remember that God so loved the... Hey, this sounds familiar. You guys want to join me on this? Yeah. All right. So let's remember that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So as long as we all believe in Jesus, we will be saved. And God created people to be different. And he also created us to worship him, to love him, to enjoy him, to show his glory to the world. You see, Jesus healed 10 men in today's story. But one was saved because he believed in Jesus. And that one man worshiped and praised Jesus. So let's continue to praise and worship him, worship him just like this man. And boys and girls, even with everything that is going on in this world today, right now, we can have faith that Jesus is with us and that he is our Savior. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, Priscilla, could you close us in prayer? Sure. Okay. Let's pray, everyone. God, thank you for creating us uniquely in your own image. Help us to see others through your eyes and love them just like you love us. Help us to be more like you every day. Thank you for your love and for your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you guys all for joining us this morning. Thank you, Michelle. High five. Thank you, Priscilla. Knuckles. Bam, bam, bam. All right. All right. You guys have a good day. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Hello, everyone. I'm Sunny, and I'm Jackson and Wesley's mommy. And Pastor Eric is my husband. I would like to share this month's memory verse with everyone. It's a bit long, but with practice, I know that we can memorize this memory verse together. This month's memory verse comes from Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. This is the NIV version. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our, our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we were healed. Long before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah wrote about a servant who would come from God. Isaiah said the servant would bear our sicknesses and carry our pains. Jesus fulfilled this prophecy by healing many people. When Jesus was on earth, he not only healed the sick and raised the dead, he also defeated sin and death once and for all when he died on the cross and rose again. In today's Bible story, Jesus healed 10 men and one was saved. Jesus comes to save all people as long as we trust in Jesus by faith. He heals us from something greater than a disease. He saves us from our sins. We can give him thanks and worship him for making us new. Let's repeat the Bible memory verse together. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. We will now conclude today's worship by reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hello everyone, this is Teacher Sonia. For our activity time today, I wanted to remind our families about some resources that you can find on our church website. If you go to www.christcentralsd.com slash cmsundays, not only will you find all of our Christ Central Kids family worship videos, but also links to the activity pages for each Sunday. Here you will find fun and interactive activity pages for our older students, as well as a coloring page for our younger children. If your family has access to a printer, please feel free to print out these activity sheets and do them together each week. If your family does not have access to a printer, I want to encourage you to still download the activity sheets and try them together. I want to highlight a few sections on the activity sheets. This section is a summary of the Bible lesson. Please take time to read and reread this section together as a family. This is the journal page section. Here you will find some guiding questions to help you and your kids reflect and write about this week's lesson. Questions like, what does this story teach me about God or the gospel? What does this story teach me about myself? An alternative suggestion to journaling can be the discussion format. As a family, you can discuss these questions right after the Bible lesson or other times that may also work for your family, such as when you are on the road or during dinner time or maybe before you go to sleep. And finally, in this section, you will find some family discussion starters. Much like the journal page sections, feel free to use these questions to review the story and to start thought-provoking and heart-stirring conversations at home. Please try and take this week to dive into these activity sheets. I hope and pray that this can be a meaningful time for your family. Don't hesitate to make adjustments along the way to fit your family's needs. Blessings to you all. Bye.